Hello everyone, so it's been a bit of a tradition at the end of every year I do a workshop tour and I think this is going to be the strangest one yet because I'm in the tent but I've just finished a big project so it's full of tools out here so I thought it's a perfect time to show you around. So we start at the back wall and pretty much everything's new because last year I was doing the tour up north in County Durham, I'm now in Cambridgeshire near Peterborough. So I've got the badger sign I made last year, oh, next to my trophy, and it's been powered by the EcoFlow River 2, which also has my lights plugged into it. It's really bright and sunny today, so I haven't got the lights on. I made this shelving unit, which has some screws on and sandpaper and bits, and underneath it, I have the racking for all my Stanley tool cases. So then I've got this bench I made this year. I've kind of thought of it as a hybrid workbench as it's kind of got a solid top there and then just a plywood top here. It's got holes in using the uh, Axminster UJK path system. I've got a vise on it and I've got some casters to move it around. Now, I don't use it that much because we'll get onto it in a minute, the other workbench I prefer a more traditional bench, I've decided. This is great for cutting down sheet goods, not something I do that often, so I'm not sure I'm gonna keep it for the next workshop, but it'd be useful for the time being, which we'll also get onto in a minute. So underneath it, I've got loads of wood just shoved down there, storing, being stored at the moment. So this is my other workbench from Arbogon Solutions. They sent me this, and it was really quick to put together, and it's great. So originally, I had it in my living room, and then I moved it out here in the summer, but now it's so cold out here, it's been minus temperatures most of the week. So I'm gonna move it back indoors, and then I've got the option of working indoors and outdoors, because at the moment, if I need to glue anything up, it has to go inside, otherwise glues or finishes or anything won't dry. On it, I've got this um, old record vise, number 52 and a half that I restored. Underneath it, loads of scrap wood, which I'm gonna have to find a new place for. On top of it, I've got the Clark planar thicknesser, which I've only just got. I went about 15 months without a planar thicknesser and I realized how much I missed it. And it was kind of the last machine I was waiting to finish off the workshop. And now I've really got everything I need out here. So it'd be good moving this back in the house anyway, because when I need to build the new workshop, which hopefully will be spring next year, I need to get this all emptied out anyway. So I've had no condensation problems at all until it got to winter. And now I can actually see there's actual ice on the inside of the workshop. It's just been so cold this week. So I'm gonna get up, empty it out today and then leave the flap open when it's sunny to try and dry it out a bit in here. So as I say, until now, I've had no problems with condensation whatsoever. And I think maybe I got a bit cavalier about it all so i put a weed proof membrane down i made a wooden floor so there wasn't much damp coming up from the ground but when i work out here i have been keeping the flap closed while i'm in here and when it's rained i've even put my air room in with the washing so maybe it's got a bit damp in here humid so yeah i'm not going to do that again i just noticed over here i've got some sheet goods which will shove down the back of this bench and uh I really want to use them up on something. So here I've got my Bosch 18 volt table saw. This was sent to me by Bosch with some other tools. Neighbor doing some DIY. I've lent them a saw today. Not that one, a hand saw. Anyway, I'm not the only one making noise. So I bought the stand for this and it's great for moving things in and out of the house. And I think when I build the new workshop, I'm still gonna keep it on this stand because it means if I need more floor space to make something big, when I finish with this saw, I can just move it out of the way and I've got more space to work. So behind it, we've got the Axminster bandsaw. So Axminster professional bandsaw I got earlier in the year, it's got a nice, big capacity, powerful motor, and I've been ripping through some thick bits of material with this. I absolutely love it. It's definitely the best bandsaw I've ever had. I mean, I had in the old uh, house, the big cast iron one, that was more powerful with bigger capacity, but it also had no dust collection whatsoever because it was 100 years old, and it did scare me a little. This one's a lot safer to use, dust collection's good, and yeah, I love it. It's probably my 
favorite tool and yeah it is the most expensive tool in here i guess as well i've got it hooked up to a camvac twin motor extractor um this is a great thing i will talk about it more in the new workshop because you can add hoses to it to make it quieter for where the air exits and yeah it's very powerful can be quiet i'm very pleased with it i'll put a link to it on the tools i use page down below with most of the other things i've mentioned uh, well if i remember to put them on there so hopefully most things i talk about are on that page now 100 mil outlet on the cam back but i've got a reducer down to 63 mil which means i can then use it with my central technology systems cyclone and barrel and that's great for the planar thicknesser the router table and some smaller machines with the table saw i tend to use the bosch extractor because it clicks in nicely the last thing in here is the start right pillar drill and i can actually see it's a bit frosty at the moment so yeah, definitely getting back in the house in a minute. None of the cast irons rust or anything because I keep everything well waxed to protect it. So I restored this back in the last house. I love it. It has got the cover, but um, I've taken it off for when I move it in and out. But yeah, it should be on there. And when it's in the new workshop, it will be. Uh, great machine. Um, as I say, love it, but um, needs to go back in the house. So that's the next job. Move everything back in and get it packed up in here for the end of the year and I'll show you the disaster that is my house. So this complete mess of an area is actually my kitchen. Um, and yes, I am single and I have no idea why. So this racking has kind of wood glues, finishes, uh, tapes, sandpaper, all those kind of supplies and a lot of DIY stuff like some plaster and filler and all those kind of things that all needs to go in a garage or a store which I can't wait to get sorted out. I've got the Bosch miter saw here on the brackets to go onto a stand. This is the 18 volt one. Underneath it I've got some Bisley cabinets which are full of tools. I'll show you that in a bit and under that is my trend uh, router table. So under here, I've got my EcoFlow, which I use to power all the tools in the workshop. And I charge this off some solar panels, which I've got in the garden. Under the router table, I've got the uh, belt cover for the start right uh, uh, drill. I've got bandsaw blades and I've got my record power air cleaner, which I can't wait to have set up in the new workshop again. And I've got my Bosch 18 volt vac which I use all the time with the table saw, the miter saw, when I'm sanding, all those, well, basically it works great with all the Bosch tools. So this area is a complete mess, but believe it or not, it's about to get even worse because when I'm not using all the big machines in the workshop, they come and sit here. So yeah, you'll see what it's like in a bit. So from the kitchen into the living room, I've got this glass cabinet I was given because my mum picked up an auction for like 15 quid. Uh, and she couldn't resist it, but it didn't fit in her house, so she gave it to me. I don't really want it either, but it's full of my Bosch tools at the moment. I've also got my Bosch cart, which has the track saw and the circular saw on. That's great for taking things in and out of the workshop. Also great for when I went to my mum's to do things like boxing in the fuse box. On top of the cabinet, I've got my badger collection and uh, lenses and batteries and bits. Yeah, can't wait for this to be in the workshop as well. So I've got these plastic crates here, all full of hand tools, plane saws, that kind of thing. All stuff that will go on the wall of the new workshop, but this keeps them neat and safe in here for now. Next to it, I've got this pile of Sapelian oak, which I ordered off eBay. Got a pallet of it uh, a few months ago, and I'm slowly working my way through it. Um, yeah, should last me for years, I think, this little supply. Again, it will go in the new workshop. The last thing here is this pine kitchen table. Now this is where I had my workbench last year and where I'm gonna put it again in a minute. And I made little blocks for this to rise it up to workbench level so I can kind of do some work on it, but I'm more kind of finishing applying and 
screwing things up. I've done it on here, but I certainly wouldn't um, do any hammering or chiseling or sawing. So Workbench is going to swap out to this in a second. That's my current very chaotic setup. The tent is now empty of tools, they're all in the kitchen, and I've got the workbench moved back in. So hopefully next year when I do this, fingers crossed, I'll be in the new workshop. So thank you everyone, thanks to my patrons. Uh, check the link below to tools I use if you want to check out anything I've featured in this video, and uh, please subscribe for more videos.